Hello! Okay, I'm sharing the link <laughs> everywhere I can. I was trying to use a different streaming software, but um, it wasn't working out. I'm trying to use um, Streamlabs OPS, but it has a huge learning curve. So I'll do more training on it and hopefully get better. Um, today, there is a principle available. It's a completely free principle. So grab the link in the description box below. Or if you're here live, let me share it on the live chat. I'm a huge Beatles fan. And I usually don't share that too much because I don't want to assume that everyone is a Beatles fan and that everyone wants to play Beatles all the time. But I thought, you know what? YouTube is all about adding a little bit of your own personality into what you do. And I thought, you know, I, maybe other people will enjoy Beatles. I always liked the Beatles, but my appreciation for them grew so much after I started learning ukulele. Because once I learned how to play Beatles, Playing anything else seemed really simple. Do you know how, I don't know if you've ever worn ankle weights, but if you ever have worn ankle weights, the moment you take them off, you feel like walking is easier, like it's lighter. That's how I feel about the Beatles and their music. It sounds simple, but it's actually really difficult and challenging. And once I learned how to play Beatles, I had mastered so many other things. So go ahead and open the principal link. Again, it's down in the description below and it's also in the live chat. You do not need to um, add an email address or anything like that to have access to the principal. I've never liked doing that. Um, I'm looking at the live chat. I see uh, Monica's here. Ellie is here. I've been practicing. Awesome. Hi. Hi, Tana. I see the little ball of yarn. So I would like for everyone to share what is your hobby aside from ukulele? And if you haven't found a hobby yet, because I felt like I was like 32 and still really didn't have a hobby. I feel like I've just found my real hobby now at 34. Um, aside from ukulele mati, but Tana shared a hobby that she really dove into during the quarantine, and that was, this is called cross-stitching, right? Mr. K says, build 3D printed robot. That is fascinating. I was thinking how cool it would be to do a 3D printed um, capo and sell it at like basically nothing, you know? Like how affordable can I get with a capo? And uh, I thought that would be really cool. Um, archery and sewing. Archery, that's so cool. Badminton, photography, accordion. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I love how many hobbies there are in here, fishing painting and macrame stained glass. So I am interested in, um, those of you who are part of, let me center this a bit. Those of you who are part of our Telegram group, can you share a picture of the last time you were doing whatever you do as a hobby? And if you have not joined our Telegram group, you can find it as Uglandia on the Telegram app. trying to find the key for this it's either too high or too low for me but i like that the chords are friendly uh, okay let me go over the chords we're gonna do c g and c and stop or let it ring the 
down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down. So down, down, up, up, down, up is a really, really common strum. It's a staple. You should have it in your ukulele toolkit. Down, down, up, up, down, up. I know that some absolute beginners cheat, cheat by doing all down, but that's gonna make for a very stiff hand. So work on mastering that the right way. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up up down up. so give one of those drums for each of the notes in the intro down down up up down up down down up down down up up down up and then one more down strum Um, if you have a lower voice, it's going to be down an octave for you. Okay. The nice thing about these chords and the reason why I like, I chose this song and I think it will make you an advanced player is that there are so many of these transitions that hold one finger in the same position. So you've just done C, G, C, and stop. That gives you time to jump to a D minor, but look, 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 look up, look up. I want, as you lift off that ring finger, I want that index finger to be in position. So each one of your movements should be really efficient. I want you to think about shifting your energy. So it shouldn't be off and then on. It should be one seamless move where you pivot on the index finger. Look up, look at how that index finger lays down. And that's going to be your little anchor to put down the next two fingers for D minor. Next is G7. Leave that index finger where it's at. And look, you're going to rotate the hand up. And then next is C. Look, 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 look. That ring finger is coming down. Next is A minor. We'll look that middle finger is almost in that position that we need it for. It's going to stay here for the next F. Your index finger should almost be right there. D minor. Well, you already have two of the fingers you need for D minor. So just add that ring finger. And it looks like B flat has nothing in common, but that index finger is already in the position that you need it for B flat. So just look, 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 look. These two are going to switch strings. Lay down that index finger for a baby bar. And G7, well, you're already on that index finger on E chord. So, and the middle finger is already in the position on C chord, C string, I mean. So, you're just gonna shift up. So, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chord positions without really moving too much. And I think that's if I can teach you anything in 2022. Happy New Year. It's that I was watching Netflix a hobby. I'm looking at like the old chats. I know fighting Pete. If I can teach you anything in 2022 for me, it's about being super efficient with your movement. I want every single movement that you make on your hands, on your courting hand, to lead you to the next chord. And as you're playing a chord for the fingers to be thinking of or positioning themselves up into the next chord you're going to play. So that is my goal for this year, to really help you all accomplish your really efficient hand movements. I don't know, um, drop some orange hearts if you agree. If you've ever seen a pro player almost look like they're not doing much on this hand because they're they're just so efficient with their movements. It looks like all of the action is happening here. I mean, of course, some pro players will do major jumps, but when they're staying up here, maybe you've noticed that they don't have huge movements. And that's what I, again, want to work on this year. So again, let's go from the D minor. 
Let's do one island strum per chord. It'll be slow. Now here's another tip. On the island strum, you have an up, right? Down at the end, down, down, up, up, down. On this up, it's when I want you doing your switch. So both hands should move at the same time in position for the next down strum. So if you never knew, like, when am I supposed to do a switch? It's as you're doing that up strum, like, at the end of that up strum, it is when you're supposed to move to the next chord. So let's start on the D minor. One, two, one, two, ready, go, down, down, up, up, down, up, switch, down, up, up, down, up, switch, A minor, F, D minor, B flat, Póngale like al video. Sí, póngale like, please. That's <laughs> so fun. All right, let's try again. D minor. Two. One. Two. D minor. Ready? Think of the next chord. Think of the next one. Think forward. Think forward. Next one. Look ahead. Look ahead. Look ahead. Keep looking ahead. Okay, pause. Another thing that I talk about often, I do it a little bit more on Patreon. Um, I want you to notice pattern in the music. So this whole section started on a D minor, right? Well, now we're coming back around to a D minor. So whenever you see a repetition in a chord, I want you to immediately think, okay, let me see if it follows a similar pattern. So in the beginning, we had D minor goes to G7. Now in this fourth line, sure enough, D minor goes to G7. Then we had C goes to A minor. In the next part, sure enough, C, A minor. Next, we had F and D minor. Next part, we have F, but we have a G7 to a C. So almost everything repeats except that end of the first verse. So let's try. What is your new hobby, Bernie? So my new hobby that I've just picked up on is investing and learning about investments. So um, I downloaded the Robinhood app about three months ago, I think. And I decided to start with $100 just to invest. And wow, my investments grew $7 today. So um, I started uh, investing, I started with $100 first and watching YouTube videos about which stocks to invest into. And then um, I picked a few companies based on like the research that I did that I thought would do well. And I set up recurring investments of, I think like some of them it's a dollar a day and some of them it's $3 a day. So I think I have like three companies that I'm investing a dollar a day, $3 a day or $2 a day. And it's been three, almost four months now, and it's made it up to $900, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Bernadette teaches training. <laughs> oh my gosh, why does that have such a great ring to it? I love it. So um, yeah, in the past three months, my investments, I don't know if you can see it, have made $37. That's way better than a savings account. <laughs> um, so I think it's a pretty fun uh, network or net, not hobby, I guess. And I think about it this way. Since I work from home, I don't go to Starbucks or to Subway and pick up my daily sub or sandwich or latte. So I thought like, well, what would I do with that money since I don't spend it? Well, I should try and invest it. And it's not like I'm putting my life savings into it. You know, I just do about five bucks a day. And then um, just in because I'm watching those channels and reading those articles and in the, those circles now on Facebook and stuff, uh, they're all talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so I thought, OK, well, I'll try that. And so I just. This started like three weeks ago. I started buying, I think, like a dollar of Bitcoin and a dollar of Ethereum a day. 
So, um, yeah, it's just for me, I'm not investing my whole life savings again. It's more like if this works awesome, I'm going to do it for the long run. I thought it would be a fun little project to do. And then if Danny decides to go to college and leave uh, the house, then I can pass off the earnings to her. So it's I'm not really seeing it as something for me, but just the learning of it is the hobby. Um, the app that I'm using is called Robin Hood. Coming this year, Uglandia NFT. I will talk about NFTs at the end because I have been thinking about an NFT and I think the uh, idea is solid today. Okay, so let's play the verse, the whole verse. Close your oh, I lost it. All right, here we go from the D minor. One, two, one, two, ready, go. also ukulele players so if you want to check out an incredible musician on ukulele Chris Fujigami is the person to check out and by the way NAM is happening in June this year Chris are you going to be there I don't know if you're here still but if you're going to be there oh, I'm so excited because I love watching you play net live at NAM. And Amari Mati is saying, I'm doing down, up, chuck, up, chuck, up. Down, down up, chuck, up, chuck, up. Are you doing down, up, chuck, up, chuck, up? Or down, chuck, up, up, chuck, up? Let me know if that's a typo or if that's exactly what you're doing. Alrighty, so we talked about patterns, right? The next verse starts on a D minor. So I want you to look and see, does this next verse follow the same pattern as we did in the previous verse? So we started our D minor going to G7. That's the same. C to A minor, same. F, D minor, B flat, G7, same. D minor, G7, same. C to A minor, same. F, G7, C, same. So now, now that you have those two verses in the bag, let's do a full playthrough. If Kamaka Hawaii goes this year, we will be there. Can't wait. Awesome. And I'm going to try and get a few extra NAM passes for subscribers here. So keep posted, especially on Patreon is where I post a lot of updates. But Patreon and Telegram are the best way to stay in the know. Um, so for anyone who's willing to make the trip, start thinking about that. If you would like a NAM entry pass because um, Anya shared at the last now that they had extra passes that didn't get used so they would love it to go to subscribers and people who are fans of the brand so we'll see Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. let's try it both verses one two one two one two close your eyes and I'll kiss you
So now let's keep looking at pattern. Let's skip this two line section. Let's skip the instrumental part. And then let's go to close your eyes. Well, even the lyrics look the same. I'm looking at verse one and verse three. Um, yes, verse one and verse three are the same. And then the ending looks like this middle section. So if we were to break this song down, we have two sections. We have the verse form or the verse pattern. In music, we call form pattern. And that middle part. And then we have a C augmented. So what I do when there's a chord that I don't use often, and I'm not sure exactly what it is, I go to ukulelehelper.com and I just type in the chord that I'm trying to figure out. So C with a plus means augmented and that means that I'm going to add a sharp G. So I'm going to add my first finger here on the first fret of G string and business as usual. Pauline! Hi, I was wondering where you were. So we've got an A minor. Oh, you know what's happening? We're gonna have a descending line here. So it's gonna go from a A minor. And then you're gonna open it. This is gonna sound better on a low G uke. So let me grab. The closest one to me right now. Okay. Okay. So we're going to have C, right? A minor, C with the G, C. Not bad. Yes. C augmented is 1003. Thank you, Shelly. That's that middle section. So that's fun, right? I see Dacia saying yes. Do a giveaway of air tickets from Bangladesh to US. I mean, I'm not saying yes, but I am curious. Okay, so I'm opening Google Chrome and I'm gonna open new incognito window. So we're opening a new incognito window means that you can privately browse privately and other people who use this device won't see your activity and then um the companies won't see that you're looking for flights because once companies see that you're looking for flights all of a sudden those prices spike because they know you need to travel all right so usually los angeles california is the easiest What's the largest airport in Bangladesh? Is it Dhaka? Chattogram? What is it? Let me know. Okay. And you always want to look one way first. Dhaka. Okay. That's the capital. I'm just curious. And that would be for like, you know, one way it's 1,100 if you were to buy next week, but if you were to buy in February, it's 600. So I'm curious about June. Six forty-five for one way. I I don't think like that's terrible. For like 
June 11th, but it is a long trip. It's 27 hours with two stops. You would have a stop in Hamad and and San Francisco. Start saving now, Sayara. Let's do a GoFundMe <laughs> for Sayara to come. <laughs> Um, cool app to track flight prices is Hopper. Oh, I was using Hopper yesterday for hotels. It's a little terrible. Yeah, it's a terrible trip. I feel like if you're going to make the trip, just move. Okay, so let's see if we can try and do the second verse and that middle section. Bonjour de la France. Hello. Oh, I wish this song wasn't just so high or so low for me. Okay, let's take it at the second verse. One, two, one, two. Oh. slash c mean great question and somebody said they don't have the sheet music let me share the link again uh, it's on the live chat a minor slash c that's this sheet music is for anyone who plays any instrument really so what it's ha what's happening is that if you have a ukulele or lead guitar you're doing c a minor c augmented c the slash and the C are for the bass player or for the piano player to add that on the left hand or maybe a guitarist if you're playing by yourself. You know how guitarists can sometimes add the bass note on their really low sounding strings? So it's telling you to have a C in the bass. That's what the slash and the note means. So anytime you see a slash and a note, you can think, ah, oh, that's not for me, but if you wanted to play it as an ukulele player, you could. A C is uh, the fifth fret. And C plus means C augmented. That's a C with a G sharp, so on the first fret. So if you wanted to play an A minor with a C, whew, I don't even know how I would do that. This is G minor, G sharp minor, A minor. I guess this would be an A minor with a C in the bass. <laughs> That's frets five, four, five, three. So this would give you an A minor with a C in the bass, which is the second brackets in that all my loving section. So you could do I mean, this is a C chord, right? Uh, five, four, three, three. So you could do that. Where is the G here? Um, this would be a C augmented, which would be five, four, five, four, four, three. You guys are making me think. <laughs> I'm having to use my theory brain. Hi, Ray. So excited to finally be off work to catch a live. What's up? Let me share the link to the principle we're working on today. So this is why Beatles is challenging. Do you see? Like at first you see and you think, oh, no bar chords. Sweet. We got to be flat. That's not nice, but it's not terrible. It looks simple at first glance. And then you really get into it and you're like, Phew. and so I love it. Um, a minor with the sleeves, also part of the A minor C E triad. Exactly. So as a ukulele player, you don't need to worry about having a C in the bass. You're already playing a C. 
you have it right here. This just makes it so that as if you're playing with an ensemble, you hear the descending line. So you're gonna hear, uh, you're gonna hear the, that's all. I just died. I got a shout out. <laughs> hey everyone, sounded like the start of house to the, um, uh, like the start to House of the Rising Sun. I forgot it. I forgot it already. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do a little playthrough of the song. So again, the intro is down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, stop. The singing note, it's the first fret of E string. F. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Intro. One, two, one, two. Ready, go. They continue that motif. And he goes, Oh, all oh, my loving, oh, all oh, my loving, I'll send to you. This is in a different key than the original. I don't know where my Beatles chord book is, but I think in the original, the original key is a little different. Um, let me see what it is. A minor slash C means you're playing an A minor and the bass is playing a C. Okay, so um, the original key of this song is F sharp minor. So we're playing this version. So the original song would be F sharp minor, B7. Let me show you with you the link that I'm looking at right now. And, and on the transpose, add two. And that will give you the key that we're playing in. Okay. 
So, to play with. On the link that I just shared, you can also change the chords to ukulele. And the nice thing is that if you're on a computer and you hover your mouse over the chord, it'll give you the shape that you need to do. That's actually right, the way that it is in the PDF. It's just in a different key. Question, can someone post the new chords in the chat? I'm on my phone. Uh, I think I can do a screenshot and share it on the Telegram. Give me one second. I'm gonna crop the screenshot so you don't have all the boring things. <gasps> Shelly, those earrings look so beautiful. And I like the new Telegram feature where you can like a comment. Because sometimes, like, I'm a little late to reading all the chats because I can only read while baby's asleep. And it's like a thousand messages have come in, so I don't want to, like, reply to stuff and bring back old stuff that isn't relevant. Okay, so I've got the screenshot, and I'm going to crop my face out of there. Okay. Some of y'all have some really embarrassing screenshots of me <laughs> from these live streams. Okay, I just shared it on the Telegram. Boom. And uh, yes, you can adjust with a capo to make it easier to sing. So you can go back to the PDF that we have. And if you remember that your key is in the first fret of E, then whenever you add a cable, just add it to the first fret of E. Donde esta mi capo traste? Donde esta mi capo traste? I don't know where my cable is. I have like five of those things and they always grow little legs and crawl around the house. No, you know what? The little legs are my toddler who loves to play with mommy's toys. All right, well, I don't know why I have a makeup brush in my desk, but I'm just gonna make a cable out of a makeup brush. Okay, let's try. Which site allows you to change to use ukulele link, please? I am sharing it now. It's called the Ultimate Guitar website. But at the top, it shows you the guitar charts. And if you change it to guitar, to ukulele, there we go.
minor. That's always an easier key for me. So anything with A's and E's. It's difficult to strum or add the E chord, I'm sorry. But that helps me a lot. Okay. So on <laughs> why you have a makeup brush on your ukulele. My daughter loves playing with my makeup brushes. And so that's probably why it ended up in this room. And oh, there's a cake over here. Cool. Since the key is E minor, it will get higher with every fret that you add upon it. Definitely. Okay, friends. So I'm gonna end the, the live stream here. Your logo sounds so gorgeous. It's partly the mango wood and it's partly those Oasis low G strings. Oh, let me see. I'm gonna add some Oasis low Gs to a ukulele soon. I do not like having a mess in my desk, but my daughter just loves playing with everything in here. And I can see why. I mean, you have cool gadgets like this, you know, and my little phone microphone and I put my earrings here because I'll wear them right before a session and lip gloss because I'll try to add lip gloss before I go live and she loves all the markers like she just goes crazy with them so I can see why she loves playing in here but then I lose everything so I don't know if you celebrate Christmas can you use cable for applying makeup I wish I don't know if you all celebrate Christmas but we do and Jaime and I agreed to no gifts. And I thought that meant no gifts. Well, he decided to buy me a gift. <laughs> I didn't buy him a gift. <laughs> he bought me these earrings. So I'm going to wear them today for today's videos. I'm going to make some videos on Instagram. And uh, so I bought him some. I, I feel bad that I didn't buy you a gift. Gift, I bought him a, a watch afterwards his whole family said we're not doing gifts this year and they all bought gifts and I was like I'm never doing that again do we have an emoji for Danny we do not have an emoji for Danny but I know exactly which one it's going to be Danny is obsessed with owls every time she sees an owl in one of her books she goes who 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 so she's obsessed like it can be the smallest little teeniest owl that you didn't even know was on the page. Or if she sees a bird flying, she hopes it's an owl. Like she's obsessed with owls. So that will be um, Danny's emoji. And I had thought, I'm not throwing a second birthday party. The first birthday party was stressful enough. Like I'll just go big for the first one, blah, blah, blah. And now that she's obsessed with owls, I'm thinking, oh, I want to throw her an owl party. All right. I'm trying to find the link. Oh, and by group via link okay copy link i'm sharing the link to the oh stefan <laughs> stefan beat me to it um yes the owl is her thing okay if you're not following me on instagram and you want to i have an account it's called plazi um plazi because my family name is plazola and i thought plazi was a cute short name so back when instagram first started like 15 years ago, I got this account. I put, I archived all of my old posts from when I was in college and turned it into my, my business or my teaching account. So, um, I'm teaching songs on there, just 30 second tutorials. And the Rod Stewart, do you think I'm sexy song is like trending again. So I put the chord charts on there the strumming pattern, lyrics, whatever it is. And I add a little bit of my personality there through the humor because Tana told me not to go fully professional with the account. So I'm listening to Tana. Um, so I have little funny skits. Most of it is music tutorials. Like we did Total Eclipse of the Heart. So cool. Um, but all of these, each one is a tutorial for a song. So if you don't want to commit to learning a whole song, you just want to do a little practice session of little 30 seconds here and there. Or if you want to find a new song to learn and be inspired, hopefully that account inspires you. 
Never trust people who say they don't do presents on Christmas. Marciana, here's the thing. I'm the kind of person who buys Christmas presents in July. Like, I love being ready. I love being prepared. I will shop sales because July, August, um, especially September, when stores get rid of their summer inventory and they put it at mega sales, you can buy some ex excellent, excellent things for a fraction of the cost because stores just want to sell it to make room for their winter stuff. Uh, that's when I buy. And then in January right now, when the stores are trying to get rid of whatever's left after Christmas, there's not as great stuff left over. So I don't always buy, but if I see something great, I'll buy it and save it for the person's birthday. So that when the birthday comes around, I have the presents. So I like being ready, but everyone was like, this year, we're not doing Christmas gifts. It's about family bonding. It's about being together and sharing time. They lie. They lie, they lie, they lie. Ben, hi, mahalo. So, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, I, next year, everyone's getting two presents. That'll show them. <laughs> so they're going to feel bad. Um. I'm only a, you're a superstar for teaching me. Hi, Cassie. Awesome. Can you play uku with your chanclas? I mean, I can wear my chanclas. Um, thanks, Stefan, for answering my question. We said no presents too. Ha ha. Yep. Mm -mm. You are the very best. Thank you, David. It's brilliant, but you're on there. Uh, funny skits are the best. Yeah, I try to make fun of the e-cord a little bit. Uh, Ricky Sonborn is also on Instagram and he makes a fun of like the Riptide, the song that everyone wants to learn. Thanks for telling me about the Elmer pedal. I have one now and I expect it to really help me practice. Woohoo! I just got five more, but my Etsy store is on pause because I haven't shipped out the magazines and so Etsy thinks that I'm stealing. And the magazine company was like, hey, yeah, we're going to take a little longer to print the magazine. So I'm in a limbo. I can't send out the magazines because the freaking place hasn't sent them to me. And I can't open the Etsy store because Etsy's like, mm, girl, you, you said you were going to ship these things out and you haven't. So <laughs> I'm in a limbo. But once the, I can open the store again, I will add the Elmore uh, petals on there. Okay. Let's talk NFTs. Raise, drop a red emoji if you know what an NFT is. I am very curious. Do you know what an NFT is? How do you spell your account? P-L-A-Z-I. Mm -mm. Ah, they want to give me a full refund. I don't want a full refund. These people. Ah. Um. Hope you can sense the anger in my fingers as I'm typing messages to them. So yeah, my account is Plazi, P-L-A-Z-I. P-L-A-Z-I, okay. So, all right, looks like a few of you know what NFTs are. I hate that when I watch a video trying to learn what an NFT is, people break down the acronym as if that explains it. They're like, NFT is a non-fungible token. Excuse me, that does not explain it. Explain what it is. Okay, so here's what I think an NFT is. And those of you who are here that know more of it, please explain it. Because I don't think the acronym really breaks it down. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just dumb. Or, you know what? It's not that I'm dumb. I'm a really slow learner. And I think that's what makes me a good teacher. Because I, I teach the way somebody wish I wish would have taught me. So an NFT you can go to an, a website like OpenSea and you buy digital art. And these things are selling for like, I don't know, a range of money. So it can be 12 bucks, 
$15, $9, all the way to millions of dollars. And you think, why would I want to buy digital art if I can just screenshot it? Because you can technically screenshot it. So let's say that I were to create an NFT and sell it. I wouldn't create one. I would probably create like 100 NFTs and uh, non-fungible tokens, 100 digital arts, art pieces. But what I would do with that, because you can now with NFTs, is that you add physical perks or opportunities or access. So just like Patreon gives you access to attend the Zooms and to get the downloads, an NFT can do anything you want like that. And when you, let's say that all of you who are here, you buy my NFT. Well, I can, after you've bought the NFT, you have the digital artwork. There is a blockchain that knows that you are the sole owner of that NFT. Like it belongs to you. You can sell that NFT if you feel like you're not really active in the ukulele community anymore or you just don't want it anymore. You can resell it and you can resell it at a price that you set. So let's say that a lot of people want it. Then you can raise the price and then you've made a profit on your NFTs. So a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are going to OpenSea and they're trying to find NFTs that they think will go up in value later on. And they try to buy it on the cheap or at a price they can afford, hoping to flip it later on. And later on could be a day or two or a month or two or a year or two or five years from now. So I was thinking about NFTs and how I could create one that would be good. And I was telling Jaime, like, honestly, all of the things that people attach as perks to NFTs, I would just, I'm doing on Patreon already, which is like the Zoom sessions and the additional principles. And if I get extra access passes to NAM, like I want to let my Patreons know already. So I was telling him, like, I don't think, I don't see the perk, I guess, in selling an NFT. And then he said, well, what if they buy the digital art of a ukulele, but you actually send them the physical ukulele too? And I was like, now you're talking. And, and he said, and along with that, if you were to host an event here at the house, because I we have a big warehouse that I want to turn into an event space. He said, what if only NFT holders get access to come to that event? So you get the uke and then you get access to that event. And he's like, and the great thing is that you can add perks later on down the line. So if this event doesn't happen next until next year, you can add that to the NFT as a perk so um that's kind of where i'm brainstorming nfts i think it costs quite a bit of money to put your nft for sale on um on open so it's not like you can just make whatever art and upload it for free so um i, I have to think thoroughly I love the digital blueprint, NFT plus real uke and exclusive events. See, that's how I would use it. But then I told Jaime, but I mean, I feel like I could just make a $100 tier on Patreon. And for the people who are on the $100 tier, they get the uke already. Because maybe I can negotiate with some brands to get ukuleles at a slightly lower cost. And so then that that would um, cover the cost of the uke and the shipping. So, but if it were an NFT that I sell for like 200 bucks and you get the uke and you get access to, let's say a course that I don't post anywhere else, then I think that would be exciting, you know? Or like um, specific songs that I haven't taught anywhere else and I make a tutorial and you as the NFT holder, get access to that or as the nft holder i release it to you a month ahead of time before i release it to anyone else so there are some cool perks that you can add to the nfts that i'm exploring if you come up with any cool ideas on nfts that you think like i would pay for that i would like that then let me know 
Um, but I really like the idea of sending you a physical uke along with the purchase of the NFT. So let's say that I bought like 10 really different ukes and had an artist make art of those 10 ukes. And then you buy that NFT that is the art of your uke, of your specific uke. And then you get the physical uke. I think then it's kind of exciting. And um, I think it's called airdropping when you add perks to an NFT. So let's say that you bought the NFT, the, the digital art. And you thought that's it, like you got your art, you got your uke and that's it. But in a month from now, I airdrop like, hey, I'm actually going to be teaching this super private Zoom lesson for only like the people who hold NFTs. Then you get access to that. And that's something that nobody else get access to. Or like, hey, for anyone who's attending NAMM show, I'm going to do like an exclusive lunch with just NFT holders. Then that would be another thing to do. So um, that sounds so exciting. So that is something that I'm brainstorming still. So I'm, I'm glad, Martina, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I think it's super cool. And again, that is something that you can resell later on and you can resell it for more than what you bought it for. So yeah, cool stuff coming uh, to the channel. I think that... Um, I think that it's fun to look at what's coming in the future, right? With NFTs and like this all came to my mind just because I started investing in Robinhood and then I started getting curious about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so, yeah, uh, where do I find out about Euclandia magazine? So on the Euclandia website, you can see the latest issue and I'm still waiting for Mexam to send me um, the magazine. They say, according to their site, that they're going to send me mine in January 10, which is so late and I'm so upset about that, but um, it is what it is. So yeah, they're going to send me a hundred magazines, letter size, and it's going to um, be six production days. So I've confirmed it. I might have to call them today. And NFT stands for non-fungible token, meaning that it's not like actual cash that you can exchange and like go to Starbucks and buy a latte if you have an NFT. So it's not like it's tradable, you know, um, in that sense. It's tradable to anyone else who sees the value in the NFT. So like, let's say that I only make 10 NFTs and I start hosting super exclusive workshops with those uh, NFT holders. And you you see that like a lot of people want that NFT and you're thinking, man, I could sell that for like, I bought it for 50 bucks and I can sell it for a hundred. Then it's cool, right? Cause you just made money. Like let's say you reap the benefits for a little while and then you sell it and you make the money back. So then you're like, oh, cool. Well, that's what some people are doing with NFTs in the digital world. So someone that's doing NFTs really, like they're doing really cool NFTs is um, NBA. I think it's called Topshop or something like this. And they're creating GIFs, you know, those movable pictures of uh, like historic moments in NBA, like Michael Jordan dunking or LeBron dunk dunking. And if you buy the NFT, it's almost like people who collect baseball cards, you know, there's no real value in a baseball card other than the value that you see in it and that the entire community who collects baseball cards have given it. But it's not like you can pay your rent with the baseball card. Sure, you can sell it and then pay your rent with the money that you make, but the physical card itself will not pay your rent. So that's kind of how non-fungible tokens are working, if I understand it correctly, is that now it's in the digital world where you're collecting things. The weird thing is that you can screenshot it. And so people are saying, well, then what's the value if I can still hold it on my phone? It's like, well, yes, but according to the blockchain, you are not the owner of that specific fungible token. Just like anyone can print a photo of that Facebook card and say they have it they don't have the actual card and so um yes she said ships to canada <laughs> no it's gifts not gifs 
You know, I've seen a debate over that. I've seen people say it's gifts, not gifs. It's gifs, not gifs. I don't know. I'm trying to do the 15 song challenge in 30 days and it's going well with you telling me what to do. P.S. As soon as I got a ukulele, I ran into my kitchen and went to Bernadette to do the music. Yay, cool. Anyway, okay, I'm going to end the live stream now. I know I said that like half an hour ago. Um, I'm going to end it now and finish editing the tutorial for Take On Me. So either later today or tomorrow, you should see a tutorial for Take On Me by AHA. Take on me, take on me, that one. Um, I started working on it last week, so it should be done in a few hours. For those of you who don't know, we have an ukulele events calendar. And on that calendar, I've added that every Tuesday we will have, let me get the shareable link. We will have a new tutorial, but whenever I finish early, I just post it on Monday night or Monday evening. Okay, so that events calendar will show you anything that's going on um, with new videos. Um, there will be a beginner's challenge coming out soon for absolute beginners. I'm gonna walk you through holding the ukulele all the way to playing your first song, kind of like the 30 day youth challenge, but a little shorter. So if you look at the calendar, we have things going on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And that helps me prepare for just the next week. Huh. Pete says, I'm old and set in my ways for this stuff. You know, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of saying that later on, like being old and set in my ways. So I'm trying so hard to keep up, but it's it can be so intimidating. You know, when I first heard NFTs, I was like, what? Why? Why would anybody do that? And it, it didn't make sense to me. I've been studying this stuff for about a month now, and it's barely making sense. Feliz Año Nuevo. Hi, you tourist. Um, can't wait to hear you sing that song. <laughs> You're going to keep waiting because I did not sing that high note. Uh, thank you for today's lesson. Thank you. Uh I was too late, but it was nice to see and read you all. Oh, Kristen, I love your profile picture. The colors look so cool. Yeah, so there's the Ukulele Elements calendar. There's the Telegram group. Um, and we also have a really, really cool Facebook group called Ukulendia. And actually, that reminds me, I'll share. So I had an artist create... Um, you know how I have that Etsy store with the merch and like really cool shirts and all that stuff, but not everyone has access to it because not everyone can buy. Um, so I had this artist create uh, artwork for us. And I'm going to post it. Okay, so at the bottom it says Euclandia. I'm going to post the original artwork for free on the Facebook group. And I shared it on Telegram yesterday. So if you want to make your own Uglandia shirt, like you, you either they don't ship to you or you can't afford it or you don't want to put your credit card information online. I know some people don't like buying online, whatever the case may be, but you want a Uglandia shirt. I'm going to share the artwork so that you can print it out or you can make your shirt yourself or if you want to use it like on a binder cover or make a sticker or whatever it is that you want to do. All I ask is that, uh, yes, I'll share it on Patreon too. Yes, thank you. I just ask that you don't sell, you know, don't don't use it to sell to other people because that's stealing. Uh, I want it to be so that everyone can have these things for free. So I know nobody here will do it unless there's some troll here trying to take advantage of people. And um. I'm going to come down with some Bible stuff right now. Uh, so if you don't believe in the Bible or you hate anything relating to the Bible, you can close the live stream now because I never want to make anyone feel offended. So you have five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So I had read in the Bible that whatever is stolen from you is returned to you seven times fold. And uh, I'm bringing that up because 
I think that the reverse of it works too. If you steal from people, you're going to have to pay that seven times over. So think twice before you steal trolls. Um, I remember when I read that, um, <laughs> this is going to be such a dumb story, but I had a mini grill and I'd invited my friends to be outside and grill and make food and stuff. And I couldn't bring the grill back into my home just yet because it was really hot. So I left it out so that it would cool and then I would bring it in. Well, I went outside and it was gone. Someone had stolen it. And I had never had anything stolen from me before. So I never had that experience of feeling like wronged. And so I said a prayer about that. I was like, God will return my girl to me seven times fold. And I don't know what that means, but I believe. And so <laughs> I posted on Facebook yard sales, like somebody stole my grill and I put a picture of it. <laughs> and people thought it was kind of funny that like someone cared over their mini grill. But this one guy responded and he said, well, I'm trying to get rid of my grill and I feel so bad that someone stole yours. So can I just give you my grill? And it was a full-sized, amazing grill on wheels with the extra utensils. And it was beautiful. It was a perfect grill. And he said, and guess what? I have a mini grill too. I'm moving and I don't want to take these with me. So you can have them both. <laughs> I don't know if that's seven times full, but I felt like, what? Like, this is amazing. And, and he delivered it to me. So you never know. <laughs> you never know what could happen. Uh, so trolls, just know it's going to come back around. Other people call it karma, right? Um, so, yes, we have this beautiful design. I'm going to share it on Euclandia Facebook and on Patreon right now. And alrighty, everyone, have a wonderful beginning of the year and beginning of the week. I did want to set some New Year's resolutions with you all, but I thought I'd wait for February because it feels like a lot of pressure to try and start everything fresh and new in January. So I was like, let's set some goals in February. So, yeah, I have only five to go. So we'll talk in February about some goal setting and work on those throughout the year. Alrighty, fam, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you soon. Take care. Bye.